There is another seer whose chilling predictions continue to echo down the centuries. He is Saint Malachi, canonized in 1190. Malachi was a reforming Catholic prelate born in Armagh in 1094. On a visit to Rome, he was struck by a vision. Before him appeared a series of Latin phrases identifying the 111 popes who would rule the Catholic Church until the end of time. He uttered 111 Latin mottos, which are supposed to represent the nature, the name of destiny, or the coat of arms of every pope until Judgment Day. Many of the phrases are considered too precise to be the results of chance. John the 23rd, the 107th Pope in the prophecy, is referred to as Pastor et Nortam, priest and sailor. Before becoming Pope in 1958, he was the Patriarch of Venice. Paul VI is Flos Floram, flower among flowers. His coat of arms is a lily among lilies. John Paul II, who is called De Labor Solis in the prophecies, which means the sun's eclipse, the sun's labor. He is the only pontiff on the list that was born on an eclipse and later entombed during an eclipse. And the 111th, the final pope in the prophecy? De Gloria Olive, from the glory of the olive. That's the current Benedict XVI. At the end of the list, Malachi is said to have uttered a final doom-laden phrase, this one unnumbered. During the final persecution, the seat of the Holy Roman Church will be occupied by Peter the Roman, who will feed the sheep in many tribulations, after which the seven-hilled city will be destroyed, and the terrible judge will judge his people. The end. Is Malachi describing the end of the Catholic Church or the end of the world? Is Peter the Roman the last pope who will follow the current pontiff, Benedict XVI? Some experts consider that since the motto is unnumbered, they are actually one and the same. St. Malachi claims that he had a spiritual experience one day, and while in a trance, God showed him all of the popes that would exist from his time until the last pope. Malachi was given a prophecy of 112 popes. And in these 112 popes there were given signs, little clues as to the identity of each one, all 112. Well the writings of Malachi were stored away in a vault by one of the popes for about 300 years. They didn't have printing presses in those days. So the possibility of circulating the writings of St. Malachi were very small. But when Gutenberg invented the printing press, all of a sudden someone printed the prophecies of St. Malachi. And as the prophecies of St. Malachi began to be known, people became very interested. And they started counting the popes. Well, several hundred years had passed by that time. However, 112 total popes from St. Malachi to the last pope. Well, what's in fact happening right now? Pope John Paul II, who just died in 2005, was the 110th Pope. No wonder interest in the prophecies of St. Malachi are reviving right now. When the cardinals came to Rome to elect the 111th Pope, an article appeared out of India, the day before the election, a man said to the cardinals, you must elect a giant spiritual leader, you must elect a pope that can appeal to young people, you must elect someone that can hold the church together. But he said, there's one more thing you must pay attention to when you elect the new pope tomorrow in the Sistine Chapel. Make sure you don't elect a pope that has anything to do with the olive because the clue for the 111th pope was the glory of the olive, whatever that means. Well, the conclave was held, the white smoke came out of the Sistine Chapel chimney, and the word went out, we have a pope. When the identity of the pope was disclosed, it was Cardinal Ratzinger, of Germany, and everybody thought, glory of the olive. It has nothing to do with it. I mean, 
You've never heard of a Ratzinger olive, I'm sure. And so everybody thought, surely not. This, this ha- does not have anything to do with anything, even though he's the 111th Pope. Everybody was interested, though, in finding out what his name would be that he would rule under. You know, when popes are elected, they don't rule under their own name. They take a name like Pope John XXIII or Pope Pius XII, uh, the last one, John, Pope John Paul II. So everybody wondered, how will Cardinal Ratzinger rule the church? What name? Because when a man picks a name, it usually is indicative of something that means something special to him. Well, the announcement was made the next day that the Pope would rule under the name of Benedict XVI. And everybody wondered, what's that got to do with anything? St. Benedict was the patron saint of Europe. He was a very powerful man and he gave birth to a powerful order called the Benedictine Order. Well, the Benedictine Order has been powerful in the Roman Catholic Church for a long time. And it has a symbol. You may be interested to know. And by now you've guessed it. The symbol of the Benedictine order is the olive. So he chose the glory of the olive. He, now that he's the Pope rep- representing the Benedictine order. So the question has to be asked. Are we right now watching the 111th Pope. Now the prophecy says that in the days of the 112th Pope, Rome will be destroyed. Well, the prophecies of the Bible, I don't know what to say about the prophecies of St. Malachi. I don't know whether I believe in them or don't. I'm simply telling you that if this is coincidence, it's very coincidental. But I do know this. The Bible says that right at the time of the Battle of Armageddon, the city of Rome is going to be destroyed. And that's what it says happens at the 112th Pope. Now, it's really interesting that this pope just elected was elected at the age of 75. The cardinals chose an older pope on purpose because Pope John Paul II had ruled the church for so long that he had totally changed the texture of the church. They felt like they did not want a pope that would rule for a long time. So they picked a man 75 years of age. Today, he's 76 years of age. So how long will he rule? If, in fact, he is the next to the last pope, and all the other signposts that we're talking about today are coming to pass right now, then perhaps Malachi, St. Malachi was on to something. Perhaps the next pope will be the last pope. Now remember, in the St. Malachi prophecy, it says the last pope will be Peter the Roman. Now whatever that means, apparently he's going to be a person from Italy. We've had two popes in a row not from Italy. The first two popes not from Italy in 455 years. All of a sudden it looks like if St. Malachi's prophecy is correct, and I can't tell you whether it is or not. It's not biblical. It's just something that happened. But if in fact it is correct, after this pope dies, the next pope elected will preside over the destruction of the city of Rome. Several times in the book of Revelation, Rome is referred to as Mystery Babylon. Revelation 17, Mystery Babylon is called the city of seven hills. Rome is the city of seven hills. And the destruction of the city of Rome is mentioned several times in the book of Revelation. And that's what St. Malachi said. So here we are. you got St. Malachi's word, which you have to take with a grain of salt. But you got the Bible that you can take to the bank. And it's telling us, you and me, that we're getting closer and closer to the second coming. Rome began to mix their Babylonian mystery religion with that of the church. But they needed a guy to spearhead this, and this is the guy. Constantine the Great. St. Constantine was Roman emperor from 306 to 337. Well known for being the first Roman emperor to convert to Christianity, Constantine and co-emperor Licinius issued the Edict of Milan in 3 and 13, which proclaimed religious tolerance of all religions throughout the empire. The origin of the Catholic Church is a tragic compromise of Christianity with the pagan religions that surrounded it. Instead of proclaiming the gospel and converting the pagans, the Catholic Church Christianized the pagan religions and paganized Christianity. 
What did Constantine do first? He merged the church and state of Rome. I know y'all have heard that the church and the state ought to be together. It's not supposed to be together. No way. Not if the state is wicked. See, we've been constantly trying to merge church and state in, in America, and one day we'll realize that all these presidents are Freemasons and they're wicked. One day we'll realize that. Oh, yeah, I boldly say it. I ain't scared to say it. I mean, that's just what they are. I mean, if you went and took vows under Satan, then I need to know that. Amen? And Oh, I can't get amen. See, folks, scared of this. It can't be that bad. Yes, it can. If the devil is the God of this world. He merged the church and state of Rome. He made religion and government come together to be one thing. He merged Christianity and Eastern mysticism. Constantine. He created idols, idol gods, and relics. So he began to build statues and monuments and false gods and all these things so that people could worship. And we know God doesn't dwell in those things, so we know that was inherently pagan from Babylon. He ruled with absolute power. And then, of course, Constantine was influenced by Kabul Jewry because he studied Eastern mysticism. Some of the garb that Constantine and the Catholic Church was responsible for that the folks had to wear, it all meant something. The mitri, which is Dagon of Babylon, the fish hat. That fish hat is Dagon. Remember I showed you that they took the big fish and gutted him out? They set that fish on top of his head in the statues? Well, that's where they got this fish hat for the Pope to wear. In Catholicism from Babylon the throne of St. Peter you see preachers sitting in these big old chairs right here you know their chair got to be the highest in the church a big lazy boy everybody sitting in regular seat they just 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 lay back yes Lord yeah feet all up high feet high to the head yes yes Lord. got a barber chair just jack it up just, I'm higher than thee kiss when they come in to see the Pope or a high-ranking cardinal. You bow down and you kiss his ring in reverence. That's, that's, that's Babylonian. This robe, the robe, this uh, uh, sacred robe that they would wear in Catholicism, this was the fishtail of Dagon. Remember? It draped down his back so they wanted to look in worship of Dagon so they would let a long flowing robe follow them as they walked. The Roman collar, which is the fallen halo, it's a symbol of Saturn. It is the clergy, what we would call a clerical collar. This comes from Babylon. Yeah, 50, 50 years ago, you wouldn't see a Protestant preacher with a clergy collar. They just wasn't wearing them back then because it meant you were Catholic. You were a Catholic priest. They wear them now because makes me feel good when I put it on. The rosary, that's the sacred heart. It has the sacred heart on the end. When they do the rosary, they're shaping the sacred heart of Babylon. That's what it is. So they would wear the beads and they would wear the sacred heart at the end of it. They put a couple of beads here and pray and then they do the sacred heart. The priest processional this is a what would they, they used to call the babylonian parade so dagon and all the babylonian priests would actually march in and everyone would have to either rise or they would have to fall on their face in reverence to all of these god kings that were marching in men were treated like god kings this was a processional it was a babylonian parade oh i wish somebody liked this kind of stuff so this is blowing somebody's head off pulpit a pulpit was a babylonian creation that was used in catholicism because they believed the man was god himself when he spoke so they they, they believed that god came and so the people had to be separated from him so they would create a barrier to keep the people away from the man who was god incarnate at the time he was speaking the scepter of course 
they worship, they believe that there was power in this rod. That dates all the way back to Moses, but it also dates back to Babylonians. They believe there was certain power in this rod, and so the power was in the rod. So they would carry these scepters and, you know, these staffs. And, of course, the popes was just extra special, had a bent crucifix on it with Jesus in a strange posture, which is a satanic symbol. It's a symbol or a satanic relic, actually, from Eastern mysticism. It's, a, it's actually a degradation of the crucifixion of Jesus. And then, of course, church steeples. These are Nimrod's penises. Phalluses. That's so where they were created. Constantine put them on all the churches to make the pagans happy so that they would see the statue or the honor of Nimrod on the Christian sanctuaries. Can I keep going? Constantine needed a man, an ultimate man to rule. Absolutely. So they created what we know as the papacy and they created Antichrist. You want to know who Antichrist is? No, the Bible doesn't say the Antichrist. It just says Antichrist. It says Antichrist will come. Even now there are many, what? Antichrist. Some of y'all looking for one. There are many. Look at somebody say many Antichrist. Whole lineage of them right here. The Pope. This is the most wicked man there is right now. Period. He rules the world. Catholic Church has one billion paying members. Do your math. One billion paying members worldwide. That means they're pretty much running everything. No other religion, no other belief system can boast that. One billion Vatican members. The Pope. Here are some writings about the Pope. The Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, but he is Jesus Christ himself, hidden under the veil of the flesh. Catholic National, 1895. Newton's book about Catholicism says, The Pope doeth whatsoever he wills, even things unlawful, and is more than God. Pope. Show you how they reverence this Pope. Or they believe he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When they die, look what they do. Here he is right here. Here is a cardinal wearing the mitre, fish hat, in a ceremony with the skull of a dead Pope under a veil. Pope is the only religious leader that every head of state in the world has bowed before every head of state every head of state china jerusalem afghanistan there's obama america every head of state in the world has bowed and reverenced the pope think the devil didn't know what he was doing oh the devil has a plan what else do we get from Catholicism? Can I keep going, y'all? Yeah. Oh. Holy Father, spiritual covering. What is that? What is a spiritual covering? You got to be a spiritual being to spiritually cover. I can't get an amen because folks, folks have been told that some man is their spiritual covering. I don't find that in the Bible. No, I don't. Because in Babylon, priests were ruled by a hierarchical structure. Men covering men and acting as mediators between God and man. This hierarchy protected the interest of the queen of heaven and kept men desiring to please their superior in order to move up the chain of command. The Catholic Church mimicked this structure to keep the priest subject to the earthly God King authority, the Pope. But who is the Pope subject to? A female. The Queen of Heaven. This is anti-Christ. The Pope worships Mary. The pictures you see with the baby and the child, that is not 
Jesus and Mary. That is Samarimus, Ashtoreth, and Nimrod to Moose. Matthew 23, 9 says, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. They have polluted the structure and lifted men up in high positions over other men. Y'all just heard that the Vatican is calling for right now a one world religion. One, one world government to solve the economic issues in the world. They're already doing it. He met with Obama last year. He's met with everyone. Now he's saying, let's, let's push this forward. Now, most of you out there know who this individual is. And there's still a lot of you out there who know who this man is as well. But there's only a minority of you out there who may know who this man is. This man's name is Hans Kovenbach. He's better known as the Black Pope, the Superior General of the Jesuit Order. For the last 25 years, Hans Kovenbach has held the most powerful position known to humanity on the face of this globe as the superior general of the Jesuit order, an order of priests that boasts a membership of a little bit more than 21,000 dedicated members, making it the most auspicious, powerful, and certainly the most villainous organization connected to the Roman Catholic Church, the papacy, and Hans Kovenbach has been their leader for the last 25 years. The name Jesuit means equivocation. Equivocation means deception. This means that Hans Kovenbach has been the leader of a deceptive order of priests for the last 25 years. The same deceptive order of priests that were banned from over 80 countries because of wars they started. The same deceptive order of priests that started World War I and World War II. The same deceptive order of assassinating priests, of priestly assassins that sunk the Titanic for the purpose of establishing the Federal Reserve. That's right, the Jesuits sunk the Titanic to establish the Federal Reserve. They were behind that. The same priestly order that has erected colleges and that has ravaged the libraries and torn up the bookshelves, that have pushed men into offices of state and have successfully, by doing all these things, brainwashed our children, taken hold of the policy makers all throughout this world, and while doing all this successfully hid their blood-stained paper trail in the process. Well, at least most of it. For 25 years, Hans Kovenbach has been the leader of this filthy, sickening-to-my-stomach organization. But notice I say the last 25 years. This is because on January the 18th, the Jesuit order elected a new black pope. Say hello to the priest, Adolfo Nicholas. He's your new black pope, the devil's new number one hitman. He's the new head of the food chain of all the secret societies because the Jesuits are at the top of the food chain of all of the secret societies. Adolfo Nicholas is the new face of terror. At age 79, Hans Kolbenbach made an unprecedented decision to retire from the position of Superior General of the Jesuit Order, the first black pope ever to do so in the history of their organization. And he said he did so because he's getting ready to turn 80. That's interesting to me because the white Pope, Pope Benedict, is only one year his senior. I want to let you know something. Hans Kovenbach did not step down because he wants to go do some fishing on Lake Erie. It's because the papacy is reorganizing and putting all their chess pieces in place 
in preparation for the Holocaust that's going to take place here in the United States and then sweep across the globe.